So welcome again to our event, Leadership in Times of Crisis, Leadership in a Digital World. Um, and um, as the name says, we are also meeting digitally. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody um, to our event. This event is part of a series which we started in 2021. Um, titled Leadership in Times of Crises. And when we conceptualized this event series, the biggest crisis facing us all collectively was the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, while um, we now get more and more the feeling that we are getting out of the pandemic, we are certainly facing another new big crisis, um, Russia's war on Ukraine. Um, but having said that, um, coming back to the pandemic and um, what it brought forth is that it propelled us um, all much deeper into the digital work, um, from social events to education and, of course, work. And everything became digitally based pretty much overnight. The goal of our discussion today um, is to highlight what virtual leadership means in times of crisis what core competencies are needed for effective leadership in an increasingly digital workplace, and what are the advantages, but also what are the disadvantages, what are the prospects, what are the challenges, what might be also the risks. And we also want to ex uh, examine the most current phase of working through the crisis that is the pandemic, what will the future of digital leadership look like in the face of a hybrid model, which some, where some continue to work from home, while some are already returned, where some have already returned to the office. And um, in that matter, I am, for example, joining you from New Delhi, while my team is in part at the office um, at the Aspen Institute. So please, everybody who's at the office, wave my team. Yeah. And at my other part of the team is at their home. So please also wave who's at their home. So we have a completely new um, hybrid setting. Um, and this has big, big changes um, for how we work um, and um, how we communicate with each other, how we lead. Um, and how we work together and how we cooperate. And I'm delighted to introduce today, today's panel to you um, four excellent, excellent speakers and experts um, on, on this topic. I couldn't imagine, imagine anybody else um, bringing in so much expertise um, and knowledge, and I'm very, very much looking forward to our discussion today. Let me first introduce Claire Scola to you. Claire, maybe you can wave <laughs> so that everybody's, yeah. Um, Claire is a dear friend um, of the Aspen Institute Germany and also an alumni of our leadership seminar. Um, you have a wide experience um, in leadership activities, but um, also in giving advice and coaching. Since May 2021, Claire is partner in a company offering digital sales solutions and coaches and trains virtual leadership as the owner of Claire Scholar Unternehmensberatung and owner LOS League of Sales GmbH. And thank you so much, Claire, for being here today. <laughs> and I have to say, this event was Claire's idea. So um, mm. thank you very you well. I mean, um, Ehre wem Ehre gebührt. Um, the second person on our panel who I would like to introduce today um, is Natalie Bartolomeo. Um, Natalie is Vice President Sustainability, People and Culture at Bielefeld University, and thanks for waving, um, of Applied Sciences. Um, after her studies, she initially held positions in the private sector as a consultant, but in 2015, she moved completely into higher education and became a professor of business administration, um, in particular human resource management and organization at Bielefeld University of Applied Sciences. And since 2021, she's also um, vice president of sustainability and strategic human resource management. And it's really wonderful um, to have you here because you bring in um, both um, the, the practical experience, but also the theoretical mindset um, and, um, and in the framework. Um, and I'm 
very, very, very much looking forward to hearing from you. I also would like to introduce Ursula Clara Deschka to you. <laughs> and thanks for waving. Um, Ursula is a member of the board of management of Ergo Deutschland AG. Um, she started her career as a trainee at Allianz, um, where she worked for almost 16 years. And in 2017, she got the call from Ergo um, and she went. Um, and since January 22, Ursula has been responsible for the domestic health division at Ergo Deutschland AG as one of the um, few female members um, of the uh, board um, left in the financial sector. Um, so that is also an interesting perspective and maybe we can bring um, and talk about this um, as well. Last, but very much not least, Uwe Kopp. Um, Uwe is head of project management skills, qualification and coaching and uh, group project management officer of class KGAA MBH. Uh, okay, I should have done that in German instead of trying to translate that in English. <laughs> Since 2000, he has dedicated his work to the implementation of project management processes as manager in three different different companies. And um, he also worked as a consultant, trainer and coach um, in several different countries. And this is so interesting also to get your perspective of how that might differ in different cultures. So you worked in the United States, China, India, Russia, South America, uh, in general, France, Hungary, Italy, Denmark, um, and probably I left out some other countries. Um, thank you so much, the four of you, um, for being here. Um, one quick note, um, what um, we are going today is we will first have a discussion um, among the panelists and while doing so, we will have intermittent little breaks where we will um, do a questionnaire with you and we hope that you will all participate in our polling because we want to bring in your perspective early on. As always, we do have a part in our discussion where I will bring all of you in um, into the uh, exchange um, and then you can ask also questions, but we want to bring you in a little earlier. This is exciting because this is a little bit technically challenging and I hope everything is going to work. We are all a little nervous, if not, just bear with us, um, but uh, the team prepared really well. Um, and we will actually um, start with our first rapid poll question and um, Alex, I don't know if you want to bring it in. Yes, it should be, it should pop up on everybody's screen. I can see the first people answering. So thank you. And you, Alex, tell us um, when you think um, the majority has participated or when we should move on. Yes, it's going pretty quickly. I'd give it another 10 seconds, maybe. Okay. Wonderful. I think the 10 seconds are over. <laughs> and we will not show you the results yet. We will first collect, um, because there will be two other polling questions. Um, and um, then we will have a, se a section in our um, event today where we will talk about the results. So let me now turn to our um, four wonderful participants. And let me start um, with a bright note um, and ask all four of you, um, what are the positive effects um, of digitalization and the workplace and what we experienced um, over the last two almost two and a half years. Um, and I would like to start with Uwe. Yes, thanks very much. Um, well, there are a lot of positive aspects um, during the last two years. Well, people save time, of course, to travel to their work and back. In my case, for example, two hours a day. Um, well, we all have been forced and motivated to use video conference systems, sometimes even several different systems. And of course, our management could also uh, build up even more trust, uh, trust in the people, trust that the business is still running, um, although people are not in the office. So here, just a few advantages from my side. Great, thank you so much, um, Ursula, from your point of view. Yes, uh, I'm living next door to my office, so I don't have uh, the commuting <laughs> advantage. Uh, and during the week, I'm alone at home, so I, I missed uh, the canteen a lot, but um, the 
positive aspects from working at home were not so personal, but rather general observations. So the many prejudices were falsified, just such as working at home cannot be productive or commitment to the company is lost. Because our sales figures and our employee survey results show exactly the opposite. And I like to see that everybody stuck together and uh, all the employees made the best out of this situation. So a little bit like what Uwe said, that yes. there's also more, yeah, great. Thank you so much. Um, over to Natalie. Yes, as you said, I come from the higher education sector and basically my job is uh, teaching, teaching in a lecture hall. And uh, due to uh, the pandemic, we switched into the home office and that means virtual teaching. And I'm way more flexible in integrating students from different countries in my lecture because I only depend on time zones and no longer on local barriers. So transnational teaching has increased a lot and that gives me great opportunities uh, in terms of um, intercultural settings and bringing together multi-perspective which increases uh, creativity and innovation potential. And also the students as future decision takers, uh, they get way more used uh, to a setting that is virtually interculturally and very close to those settings that will expect them in the future so for both sides. That was um, highly uh, beneficial. And I think we can also transfer this to the corporate sector, which means we can integrate expertise uh, whenever we have the need to, and uh, we don't have this uh, local boundaries between us. Great, thank you so much. Um, and uh, Claire. Okay, um, before the pandemic, I traveled 60,000 kilometers a year. I was frequent flyer with a tendency to senator status and heavy user of barn card first class. That's all gone and I've gained lots of quality time while still working two jobs, which has improved my handicap in golf incredibly. And I've noticed also that I've become much more efficient in organizing uh, my, my tools that I'm using. So I like that very much too. Thank you so much. Um, after having covered the positive effects, we will also come back to the challenges. But before we do so, um, I would like to bring in the second rapid poll question. And Alex, you tell me again when I can continue. I will. <laughs> Even faster this time. Then I would say we can continue. Perfect. Um, Okay, great. Thank you so much. And it seems everything seems to be working great. Uh, thank you so much, Alex. <laughs> so Claire and Natalie, um, you have conducted um, a comprehensive study on virtual leadership during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, a, 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 so to say, life study while the crisis is going on and the pandemic. And you found some really interesting results. Um, and maybe you can, Claire, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the process. Um, and Natalie, maybe you can also tell us about the evaluation and the, uh, of the collected data. Okay, I'd love to do that. Um, actually, we were planning a completely different study. We wanted to check out which competencies are the most effective uh, in leadership, uh, um, in relevance to KPIs, to key performance indicators. And that had, would have included um, um, observational uh, research, which of course uh, wasn't uh, possible on anymore. Um, our, our customers sent um, their complete, complete employees with exception of the techni te technicians into remote working on the 15th of uh, March, 2020. And we had a one, one in a lifetime situation for researchers where you could say one specific incident and then measure what the incident has had in the way of effects. 
uh, we started a study on the on the on the um, on-site uh, behavior. So we had some comparisons, and um, then uh, Natalie with her team um, did uh, um, open and closed interviews, and also then compared the 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 results of the management behavior, the management behavior, with the KPIs, and the, what came back were four additional competencies to the normal competencies you expect from a manager uh, anyway, uh, which were, two of them were really surprising and two of them, if you'd thought about them a bit um, logically, you would have, um, they would have occurred to you, but two of them were really surprising for us as management coaches. So and I would like to hand over to Nati so that she would, if that's okay for you, uh, Stormy, so that yeah, she yeah, could say please. something about Go them. Ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, say something about the competencies. competencies. Mm, yes, uh, thanks Claire for passing over the ball. Uh, first of all, I would like to underline that uh, our study was quite uh, comprehensive because we had a sample of 60 leaders and with those leaders, we did this um, open guided interviews to find out what the um, target competencies are for effective virtual leadership. And behind these uh, 60 leaders are 1,800 employees. And with uh, hidden interviews, we also uh, try to uh, identify the effectiveness of leadership behavior. And we also measured the conversion rate as a KPI behind it. So it was a really comprehensive sample. And the first uh, question we had was, okay, um, if we just consider the traditional setting and presence, what makes a leader successful? And uh, successful means uh, economic uh, success in uh, the terms of the conversion rate. And our answer was um, that leaders with uh, professional and methodological competency are way more successful in achieving their KPIs. Um, that means uh, we talk about leaders that are especially organized and structured and are working with a lot of expertise. And the second question was, um, do the success competencies of leaders change when we switch from a presence uh, setting to a remote setting? And the answer according to our study is yes, uh, success competencies change in terms of we need more activity and decision-taking competencies. So from a presence to a remote setting, way more action uh, comes into the game. And the third question was, um, what are exactly the target competencies that are relevant for effective virtual leadership? And uh, as you see, we uh, identified uh, four different uh, competencies. The first and most um, effective one is change-oriented leadership, then team commitment, then pragmatism and expertise. And we see that uh, change-oriented leadership and team commitment uh, target more tool-based um, behavior and pragmatism and expertise are targeting uh, the attitude. And um, let me uh, talk about uh, some mm, details that are relevant to understand this. So change-oriented leadership goes way beyond openness for change because we talk about targeted management of change um, of uncertainties in larger and uh, small contexts. Then team commitment addresses the need for creating a we feeling, um, targeting um, the purpose and uh, the team commitment. Um, and here also we talk about what are the relevant tools in order to manage that. Pragmatism is something that um, especially our German culture is not so much used to because we talk about the attitude that there just are no clear and universal images of the world and we only have situational solutions that are valid only for a certain period of time. And then finally expertise, quite interesting. Um, here we talk about the thing that, um, yeah, you cannot just uh, blame your followers with uh, being charming, for example. You really have to show way more expertise in a virtual setting. And there is something like a re-evaluation of followers um, really um, saying and proving, okay, yes, I have a leader that has expertise and 
we can clearly say that the best leader in presence are not automatically the best ones in a virtual setting. But by following these four competencies, um, we have a good opportunity that our leadership behavior is effective. Thank you so much, uh, Natalie. That is fascinating. Um, could you uh, remind us um, about, uh, about the difference between the uh, um, on-site setting and the virtual setting with regard to the success factors? How, um, how much do the percentages shift uh, with regard to the four uh, competencies which you identified? Um, we did not measure these four competencies in the, um, in the traditional setting. For the traditional setting, we know that uh, we can trace back success to uh, professional and methodological competencies. That means uh, our leaders, when they are very much organized with a team, clearly structures and bring in a lot of expertise and knowledge then those teams are more successful as compared to teams that are led by social, personal or activity driven competencies. And then if we switch to the remote setting, we see that the, the, the level of action of activity of decision taking is increasing and added on to these uh, traditional um, competencies that come from professional and methodological competencies, we need expertise, team commitment, change-oriented uh, leadership, and pragmatism. So we have to see this as added on. Ah, OK. Thank you so much for explaining that again. Um, now mm -hmm. I also got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so very it, complex, no problem. Yeah, yeah it, it is. But those are fascinating uh, results. Um, Ursula, does this resonate with your own experience? Definitely. Uh, for me, the, the results give very good insight in what we experience uh, every day in our company. And I can fully underline, especially the two aspects, change-oriented uh, leadership and, and team-committed leadership. Because um, for me, what's very important is the change-oriented oriented leadership goes hand in hand, from my point of view, with uh, self-leadership. That means uh, that uh, leaders um, have to develop uh, themselves. Um, they have to be self-reflected and uh, consciously influence uh, their actions with regard to their objectives. And uh, when the pandemic broke out, we were forced to rethink the way we, we, we work uh, together and change the way of uh, how we work together. And uh, not only the, the, the leaders, but also the employees uh, were uh, concerned of a lot of prejudices against uh, working remotely. And um, all of them, leaders and employees, they have this new job to do to become a coach for themselves. And uh, Natalie was talking about uh, resilience. I think that's really, really important. Being flexible, being able to cope with extraordinary special situations. That's, from my point of view, a very, very important, important point. The second thing is the team orientation. Um, we, had, um, we had asked our, all our leaders, what's their experience with hybrid leadership? And we saw that they were really, really stressed. They were stressed because they had the feeling that they have to be available 100% of the time. That, that was uh, one thing. The next thing was um, that um, part of um, their employees wanted to come back to the office. The other half didn't ever want to go to the office again. And uh, you have to bring both uh, together and you have to keep up a team, to keep up a team culture. What's really, really difficult when uh, some people uh, don't see each other and most of the leaders, they, they are mostly a little bit older than the employees normally. Uh, they have more experience and um, they learned leading through personal contact. And um, they, they like this sort of personal connection to each other. 
this was really, really um, hard for them, or still is. And normally in our employee engagement service, we see that the leaders have uh, much better uh, results than the normal employees. This time it was other way around and uh, the employees were much happier than uh, the leaders. And I think that's, that's really um, interesting. And uh, I think the team question is, uh, important and what we do um, is that we uh, work on uh, shared leadership. So um, the, the leaders have to empower their employees. They have to have more uh, confidence into their employees and the employees for themselves. They also have to take um, this, this new power. And I think that's, that's very important and that's, um, that's even more important than before. And Ursula, when you say resilience, um, what do you exactly mean by resilience? For me, resilience is being flexible, not being too stressed from new situations and to be able to cope with um, situations which are not daily routine. Thank you so much. And I saw Uwe nodding a couple of times. Um, it seems that it is also resonating with you what you heard. Or could you guess this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was watching. <laughs> no, that's really, I really, really uh, share her statement. And, and it starting three or four years ago, exactly to those topics. It was a completely different reason. The reason was really to change from a machine, uh, from a company who's selling machines worldwide to a solution and service provider. And even this was a change, a rapid change, a deep change of the management. One were asked for. And in this context, um, yeah, HR department or HR departments, they developed already some new leadership, key leadership competences. So for example, new competences on machines, new competences on lead others, like, like Ursula said it before, and also lead yourself. And yeah, the change of uh, needed to use So of course, then the new topics like, like virtual leadership, like, like uh, working in virtual teams, working in a virtual, where the body language disappeared nearly completely. And in the first lockdown, our systems, our computer systems, the virtual computer systems, they were not able to have a meeting with 10 people with picture. So mm -hmm. it was more or less a telephone call, leadership, whatever thing. And, and this was really a challenge and uh, um, yeah, the, the skills, the change of the key competences is still going on because as in your company as well, I guess there are some people really used to have video conferences because they're working worldwide, but the other ones, maybe even the, the, the majority was working just like Ursula said, um, in the office together, in a big one and a small one. And, and suddenly the people were not there anymore. And sometimes the self, let's say the self um, Uwe, I we can't hear you anymore. <laughs> Could you say something, Uwe? Yes, if I like. No, we no, can you're hear you. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, okay wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I'll it's go. okay. I inserted some coins, so it's okay again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know what you, when, when I lost the, the, the connection, so it's really a change in, in key leadership competences here, an ongoing process, and I guess even. And we can't hear you again. <laughs> so if this continues. Can you hear me anymore? No, we can hear you again. 
but now I think Uwe is frozen. So I would, now you're back. Maybe maybe it makes sense to jump, hop off and come on in um, again. Mm -hmm. Maybe then the connection is going to be better. And um, we will use uh, the second when Uwe is gone to do um, our next and last rapid poll question. And Alex, I think it looks good. And Uwe is back. <laughs> so now you need to unmute yourself so that we can check if we can hear you. Okay, let's try. Perfect. It works so, now. <laughs> it, it does. Uh, we just did the rapid poll question. Um, but I wanted uh, you I wanted to hand it over to you again to to close, I mean to close off with your thoughts. Yeah, questions where to start and where to close, really. <laughs> <laughs> I think we only, we only lost the, the last sentence, I think. Okay, no, I said it's it's just an ongoing process from my point of view. The key leader competences, the changes that people have to do and need to do. Uh, and and also related, one, one aspect maybe related to the different uh, generations we have here already. So Generation Z needs a different type of, of leadership like Generation X. And this is also a big question for us that the management is mostly around Generation X or baby boomers or wherever. And they're just used to have different tools and different methods like people asking may, maybe as, as beginners, as starters here in the company. Uh, this is so interesting, the um, intergenerational um, aspect. Um, Uwe, um, what which generation needs what kind of leadership and how does a leader bind that together if they if uh, he or she um, has, um, yeah, I mean, team members of very different generations? Um, yeah, let's make, let's make a general cut because all the time I have individuals there, but uh, if you have, for example, the generation of baby boomers, or Generation X, they are communicating most of the time by email. Um, generation Z, they're communicating a lot of by, by chat groups, using video chat systems like whatever, WhatsApp with camera. Uh, manager of the, let's say, Generation X or, or baby boomer generation, they would never think about to open a camera on the laptop or on the, on the mobile to, to communicate with the team, to have a chat group, something like that. But really, it's a general one. And also in the international communication, it's the same. Uh, a lot of people in, in Asia are quite young, even in the top management situation, and they are working much more ad hoc and rapidly, while we in Europe, or especially in Germany, we're, we're working on very deep sequences, thinking about some problem, about some issue, some challenges, and after half a year, we are starting to work. Mm. Uh, and, and this is also one, one point we found out in the international context of the virtual leadership and, and the leadership skills as well, to bring the different uh, world's aspects together. That's not, not a question about bad or good, it's just a question about learning from the other ones. Thank you so much, and we, we will come back to this. As I said earlier, I'm in Delhi, and I can just underline what you said. It's um, uh, I didn't have a program for the conference the day before the conference started, which as a German made me <laughs> crazy. And um, in all the um, the pre-discussions we had, it was all WhatsApp. And I said, well, but if you do WhatsApp, you can't structure, you can't compare, I mean, you can't. And they said, but we do WhatsApp. So you've got to do WhatsApp. <laughs> so I, I do agree. There are lots of cultural change, uh, cultural differences. And I would love to come back to this um, uh, in a second. But let me um, turn back to Natalie. You identified the, the, the core skills which are um, necessary to be successful in a digital setting or a remote setting. Is this the future? Is this what it will, um, will always be needed? Or in a hybrid setting, will it be again different? 
Um, so the uh, core competencies or the four competencies that I just underlined, they are related to the uh, virtual setting. So here we just talk about the virtual one. And I think a bit between the lines of your question uh, is, is a very good point. Um, because when we now talk about a hybrid scenario, then the thing of how do we design a safe switch between um, a world of presence and a world of um, remote work, um, how is that adaptability function? I think that is uh, the key point in the future. And maybe it sounds so easy and we can say, okay, we tested it now for uh, the last two years, but um, what we can um, yeah, detect and uh, what I know from further interviews is that exactly this safe switch is an important thing that we have to uh, have a keen eye on. And uh, as I said, we have different success factors in the presence and the virtual work. And um, let me point this out again, in the presence world, it is more about um, professional competence, methodological competence. And in the virtual setting, we have added on these four and uh, it is way more activity driven. And if I switch um, between the worlds uh, once or twice a day, I always have to adapt my leadership behavior. And this adaptability is one of the key competences for the future. And um, I think we still have a backlog in even training this virtual competencies. So um, let's not forget about this. Uh, Claire and me, we see this. We have uh, 60 leaders uh, so far in our training program, which ends up with a colloquium at our university. And the enrollment numbers are even higher for uh, this year. So we can clearly see that there is still need for training those virtual competencies. And I also have the feeling that accepting, accepting that uh, the scenario that this is the case, that we still have to train this and that we will not return to a present scenario. We will work uh, in a hybrid world. I think the acceptance is also still something where we cannot uh, close the chapter because the attitudes haven't changed uh, sufficiently. And um, I would uh, like to pass over the board to Claire because we work very close to each other at that point uh, by maybe confessing or contradicting uh, at that point. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Nati. Um, that's my experience in the training and in the coaching of, um, of, of leaders. Um, they most of the, or ninety percent of the leaders that I am now training and coaching started out in a in an on-site setting and not in a remote setting, and uh, they all are still doing a uh, they all are sort of a certain amount of sorrow, missing their past because what they 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 at the moment they're losing more as as leaders than they are gaining, they're losing their platform, they're losing their they're losing their show. And they have to now um, perform and are being evaluated by the person who's watching them in a basically in a TV kind of a setting and deciding um, every 50 seconds whether he wants to follow or she wants to follow her or him or not. And they are, and the g gaining feedback is also much harder in because the, the, the employees are much more willing to give feedback in this slightly distanced setting than if the, the manager is standing right in front of them and also willing to give uh, feedback uh, over hierarchies and you know, le letting the, the organization know what they what the organization thinks of them. And we see that in something else, um, which uh, is a bit worrying. Um, I think something like 40% of um, highly qualified employees at the moment are willing to change jobs. Because if I can change a job without moving the city in which I am, uh, then uh, the, the whole market becomes much more volatile. So um, manager, and, and I, my, one of my sayings that I've been using for the last 30 years is people join companies and leave managers. And we are now seeing uh, a lot of this uh, walking out on managers because it's much easier. So I would agree with uh, Nati, we have a very volatile situation, which is very, very difficult for leaders at the moment. Thank you so much. Um, that is really uh, fascinating because Ursula has to leave us at five, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I would say that we jump right um, into the evaluation of our polling results, if they are already ready um, and I see Alex nodding, you are amazing. Um, 
All right, there they are. Um, and I would love to ask um, Natalie and Claire to kick us off um, with a brief evaluation of what we are seeing. And then I would, I would also like to hear Ursula um, if this resonates with you um, and bring you in before you have to go. Okay, thanks. So uh, if we check the first question addressing the ideal uh, frequency of contact between uh, the leader and the team, um, we see that um, 60 percent so more than half of our participants today say once a day um, should the contact be and i'm very sure uh, if we compare this to the old world um, we have an increase weekly would be something where we can assume okay maybe um, you are already used to this uh, new setting and you have your structure for meetings so weekly uh, would be okay but just for 30 percent and then twice daily which is uh, i guess way more as compared to the traditional setting uh, at least say uh, 10 percent so we have 70 percent if i put this in a nutshell uh, where we see an increased uh, frequency as compared to traditional uh, settings and uh, 30 percent that uh, think that weekly is sufficient and maybe we can open uh, this point uh, to uh, ask or to also involve our participants with a question those who say that twice or once uh, daily that uh, would um, target an increase i guess and weekly i would assume that you already are familiar with the new setting and that you have very structured um, meeting organization is that right and um, maybe we can then also ask um, what contact means. Um, is it with a team as a whole, a meeting with a team as a whole, or um, because contact, I guess you can interpret in a different way. Maybe um, Natalie, you can also quickly lead us to the other to the other two, so that mm -hmm. we can. Mm -hmm. Ursula, because I'm a little nervous about the time that um, Ursula can. Yes, come no, no problem. Okay, I will I will continue directly. Okay. Yeah, then uh, we we talked about the ratio between praise and pressure. And we see um, a clear tendency for 60% praise and 40% uh, pressure. And here also the uh, very interesting uh, question would be how is that changing in contrast to the traditional setting? That would be something that we could uh, discuss. And then the last one, um, do I really have my followers as followers? So are they truly deeply behind me is the question. And we see that we are not uh, at the high score. 100% means I have the whole team behind me, but at least 75% uh, say, okay, um, in that ratio, I have the team behind me. But still we have things to do to learn uh, because I see that 5% uh, say, okay, only a fourth of my team is behind me or um, have uh, even say uh, nearly 20% today. So there are things to learn, I guess. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, in the, in the second uh, question, we have 60% praise, 40% pressure under two columns. Could you identify which is 37% and which is 26, maybe? Uh, uh, yeah. so, so 26 would be um, a, high, a higher ratio of praise. Ah, OK, there yeah. I see the point. Then I need Alexandra. I'm not, I'm not, the scale should, is it wrong. It could be either way. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. It's 6% and 40% uh, is the 26%. So that's more pressure. Yeah. yeah. So it's in so line with the 18 and 7, yeah. Yes. Okay. So we see an increase in praise, mm -hmm. I guess, when we compare it with a traditional setting. Okay. So that would be a first interpretation. And then I would pass over to uh, Ms. Miltner again, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's stormy. <laughs> stormy, um, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, 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 no problem at all. Um, and I pass over immediately to Ursula because um, I would like to, um, to hear your opinion 
if this is something which you would agree the, these are you surprised by these findings or is it something you would have suspected so i must admit i'm not really surprised so we don't have this uh, intensity of contact so we need more frequency i think that's that's completely normal if we don't see each each other directly we want to see each other more often that's that's uh, question one question two we see that it's a little bit more pressure than praise or for some it's more praise than pressure that's depending from what is your personality so i think it's it's it, it differs completely when we when we are talking to different people and uh, the last question so people are not so sure if their employees stand behind their current leadership style and that's completely normal and what we can see is that um, this situation now leads to incre increasing complexity. That's what Natalie and Claire said. Uh, we see that the leadership role is much more uh, complex, more exhausting also. And um, we, have, we want leaders that can break down knowledge silos, thing, that can build bridges between presence, and, and remote work. And I think there's really one positive effect because leading is so exhausting. We, we will get in the future, I'm very sure about that, more leaders that are really willing to lead and not only to make a career. We will have more self-reflected leaders, more people who really um, take part in the coaching or, or, or are better in leading uh, all themselves because only those uh, take the decision to lead that really want to and are motivated to lead. They are really interested in, in the contact uh, with, other, with other people. And I think that's, that's a very positive effect uh, that we can see here. Thank you so much. Um, Ursula, on one hand side, you are say, saying um, leading is exhausting. Yes. Um, and is this the reason why people will think twice if they want to become a leader and then uh, there's a self-selection process? Yes, I'm, I'm really convinced uh, about that because today leading is being sometimes some, some targets for the future. I want to become a leader not because I want to lead people, but just because I'm, uh, I want to make a career. And now that, that uh, being a leader is much more exhausted, I'm, I'm, I'm completely convinced that there will be some sort of selection. This is really positive from my point of view. Let me ask the same question to Uwe. Were you surprised or not surprised? Um, to tell the truth, I wasn't really surprised about that. <laughs> um, and I agree again with Ursula. Yeah, it is like that. The leadership is changing. And especially her, her remarks about the exhausting way of uh, leadership is, is really a point for us in the company. We have a traditional company. It's a family business. Although we have 15,000 people around the world. But a, a lot of our leaders were coming up to their position because they want to make a career or they're the experts on certain topics, but maybe not the expert on leadership. And suddenly, uh, I'm just thinking about a meeting I had yesterday with one of our area managers. He said to me, Uwe, I don't understand my people anymore. Yeah. In the office, they came to me asking questions about the job, about the professional questions, whatever. And now I have to ask them if they have time for me <laughs> because now they are self-organizing themselves much, much more. Mm -hmm. and, and this is also a question, like, like Ursula said, this is, it, it is exhausting for a lot of managers really to have the mental change to this mm -hmm. new thinking, which I guess will come up or will be normal in, in one or two years, three years. And Claire, you are doing a lot of coaching. Um, how do you deal with exhausted leaders? Motivated, well, but exhausted. Um, 
actually it's exhausting at the moment because they're learning new, new tools. Um, and of course the, 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 the curve, the learning curve always, you know, you get out, you, you pushed out of your com comfort zone and you're put in, pushed into a learning zone and learning is of course exhausting. Uh, I have to, I'm, I'm, and Nati can also confirm this. I can see the courses that I give go over three months uh, and I can see how they get more and more enabled and less and less helpless. And uh, helplessness is one of the major, major contributors to exhaustion and they feel more in control, um, but they're not in control of the people they are managing. They're in control of their own behavior which is also a good help. And actually that should have been that way also on site, not just off site. Um, so um, I'm, I, I can't say that it's a, it's a doable situation that they're feeling exhausted. They get better over the time. The more tools they have, the, the less exhausted they feel. Thank you so much. Um, I would now also like to bring in our participants. And I, I, I saw that um, a couple have already written into the chat. Um, I would prefer calling on you, if I may, um, and bring you in um, directly. And I see um, that Albert Hani wrote, um, Albert, do you want to come in before you have to leave also at five? Maybe I can give just a short uh, comment uh, from uh, my, my side. I really liked the, the, the discussion and it is applicable to um, my position at the moment in RICO. And the discussion is especially relevant uh, for the organization like ours, which is constantly developing. Uh, we are still counting new, but at the same time, so I think it is uh, uh, also very you know confusing for me as well as challenging. I also feel very uh, uh, exhausted. Uh, especially knowing that in times of uh, reforms, the, the, the changes in, certain, in sense of uh, so, uh, so societal changes, as well as uh, digital changes in the world are uh, making, of course, the work of the leaders even uh, harder. So I, I really want to uh, uh, thank you all for the inputs, uh, for the comments that you gave. I, I, it was a learning experience for me. Thank you this, so much. Short comment before I leave because I have another meeting at five. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much. Um, so, if I may, I would like to bring in Magnus Lambsdorff. Mm, Magnus, are you still with us? I have to check the. Um, part, or maybe he dropped off. Mm, um, well, um, then, um, and I unfortunately can't see who that um, actually is, um, Diloup also brought in a question in the chat function. Can I call on you and bring you in? Sure, of course. So oh, no. um, my, my main question was, um, I'm, I'm really glad that we have this discussion somewhere, by the way, so because I think it's really important. So my, my question would be, uh, first of all, um, uh, what do you think, how should, an, uh, uh, let's say, um, a native virtual corporate culture look like? So if, if, if you think of the future, there will be like fully virtual uh, uh, corporations coming up. And we also talked about the fluctuation that we have in such virtual things. So um, knowing that uh, corporate culture is really an in, in important thing in today's world. So how could such a really fully virtual corporate culture look like. And the second thing is, um, um, at, at least I'm somewhere between this generation X and, 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 and Z. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure if this is really a desirable uh, future, not only for me, but, but for everybody. So um, I'd just like to know your opinion on this. So it's an open question to, to, to everyone I assume. And I would first hand to Ursula for the last three minutes before you have to hop off. So um, I think there will be different uh, companies, companies who are completely in a virtual, um, in a virtual um, ambience. So, and that's what Natalie said before, we have this uh, four, um, four um, requirements for, for leaderships. And I think that's typical 
for pure virtual leadership, Natalie, you, you can comment on this afterwards. And then I'm, I'm very sure that not only depending on age, definitely not, but depending on your personal structure, there will be people there who, who love to be in an organization where people meet every day. And, uh, and some will be in a different organization. So I think there will be companies that focus directly on how they want to work in the future. So that's what I think will be happening in the future. But Natalie, perhaps you want to jump in? Yes, uh, thank you. So I would also um, share the, the question, is that truly a good idea to just uh, work virtually together? Because uh, at, as we began today, we, we talked about the advantages, but uh, we also know from uh, empirical research that there remain challenges. And one of the key challenge is um, the social function. So especially the informal network uh, is uh, way more difficult um, to, to be uh, designed um, by uh, the leaders of an organization. And also the question of um, really being innovative and uh, having the creativity uh, usually needs um, personal contact. And as we know, work is a social process and here we really have to train skills in order to um, um, implement and also um, sustain this uh, team commitment and on the other hand we definitely have health issues that we uh, shall not forget because all this increased self-organization and uh, own responsibility is something that we discuss and discuss but that also have to be trained otherwise we uh, go into uh, burnouts and all that uh, mental uh, problems that we uh, already uh, know from the past that we definitely see an increase uh, from um, empirical research. And even if we say, okay, we, we get over all these challenges, uh, we, we have the question what is needed in order to uh, to be prepared for a purely virtual work. And then my answer would be, we need maturity, maturity in, in self-organization, maturity in virtual competences, maturity in uh, virtual uh, collaboration, and also uh, maturity in really taking over responsibility. So, and that also means being accountable for the results. And I still think that we have uh, personal competency trainings that are needed, but also cultural development that is not as advanced as uh, as we need that uh, so that that can truly function. But it is a future scenario and uh, we can talk about how can we get um, answers to that challenges and how can we increase maturity. Thank you so much. And I think we have to say goodbye to Ursula first, do we? Thank you so much for being here with us today. Bye, um, this discussion all the best bye -bye. good luck in your next uh, meeting um mm. did i see that you wanted to ask a follow-up question um to natalie yes so, so my question would be if, if, if we have the time my, my question would be sure. um so in in other words um, the human race is not yet ready to have uh, a cloud native uh, um, a cloud native corporate um, environment where there might be um, single ones who are, um, mm -hmm. I cannot answer this uh, generally, but the sure. broad scope where we really have, a, um, and in German, I would say flächendeckend, <laughs> um, then and I think that is not the, uh, the scenario. But of course, also, this is a learning uh, process. And if we have best practices and can really see how it is functioning, how to overcome all these challenges, then we can learn from each other. And I think it's then the case that the, um, the bigger ones will learn from the smaller ones. But that is so far just a thesis. Uwe and Claire, do you also want to come in on that topic? Well, I, I, I was just looking at the at the chat and there's a word that has shown up twice now and, the, and that's the word trust yeah. and um, what managers very often forget forget is that you have to build a trust account with your employees so that you can cash in on the on trust and that's an activity that comes mainly top down and not bottom up 
Uh, and what I always say in my in my trainings and in my coachings, you build up the account so you can cash in, and this account has no um, um, has no deposit. It's only you can't go into minus. You can only go into you have to put into plus. And I think um, most of our society still thinks, and that's not a specifically management. Uh, problem it's a problem generally of people that trust is something that just sort of floats around and is there or isn't there it's something that you have to work on as one can very well see in the very present political situation when trust is being destroyed by the minute um, so i would like to agree with natty we're on a long learning curve Uwe, you agree a long learning curve um yeah i think yes i agree <laughs> it is really a part of learning and what, what Nati said yes it is a, a cultural change a long one and 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 also a question of trust and also a question of of motivation so the self-motivation but also to motivate people to, to go this way and um, from my company or in the company I'm working for, it's really, uh, really depending on the culture of the different companies or the different departments. So some, some departments, some companies already decided to stay on the virtual side because they are doing some IT jobs, working the whole day in front of the screen. So it's, it's not big, a big change from, from past to now, but um, most of the people I'm talking to, or when they're asking to, for for coaching or um, colleague advices, and they're telling me they the, the the big point which is missing in their life is really the informal communication with their colleagues, to see them, to talk about some whatever private things, and and just to meet them, and and people they're getting lonely in the home offices. Okay, there are some methods you can do like like virtual coffee breaks, but there are a lot of people say to me yes. I, I'm keen. I want to go back to my office because I see my colleagues, I see my social environment. And, and this is for me important. And, and, and this, I think it's, uh, yes, it's a learning curve. And, and um, I'm not pretty sure if I want to be, let's say, virtual for the rest of my working life. <laughs> I, uh, I, I do. Agree. You do? Okay. <laughs> uh, I do. I don't want to go back to my old life. Oh. I also want to bring in um, Jamila Lucia Pop. You also wrote in the chat. Um, and can I bring you in? Sure. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for your great ideas. And I'm nodding because it's totally fitting into my experience. I'm a change manager and um, coach and trainer as well. And, um, and yeah. This this uh, COVID is so like um, you said, um, Uwe. Um, it's like it has two sides to itself. Uh, first of all, I'm totally grateful um, that we discovered more possibilities, more flexibility, and options to work, and also prove how much is possible if we don't see each other physically. Um, but on the other hand, we are physical beings. Uh, we 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 dwell on being physical, so um, I can totally um, agree. Um, yeah, and, and lots of uh, leaders and managers I worked with in the past month, um, they named that as the core challenge to keep the team together without the informal little talks, without observing how is he doing or why is she how is she feeling, why does she have red eyes? You can see you can't see that in a virtual conference. But if you see it like from face to face, they can address it and um, ask, hey, what's what's going on? How are you feeling? Um, can I help? Can I support in any uh, sense? Yeah, so I can, um, I see the, the dual challenges and on the other hand, the potential. And um, being a change manager, uh, what, what I wrote, trust is basis and um, change needs something constant, in my opinion, you always have have the, um, the other side of the metal. And if you are not rooted somewhere, it's hard to really be creative and um, spin new crazy ideas without this missing root. And um, there are various kinds of root one can imagine. And my experience trust um, like as, as the 
like as a feeling that things will go good for me in the end will become good for me in the end and i can trust you to not mean bad for me <laughs> not to do me any harm so this is um this is so so important the 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 more we change the faster we change uh, the more we need the spaces in my experience and um the other thing um i i found uh, to be very helpful in, in change processes um when, when i'm only virtual and trying to manage these processes is to have a really clear idea where about the future so i really like the question of dilute <laughs> um so what what does this future look like what does does this culture look like and um to have this kind of purpose and ideology that we can chime in um, this is also a very strong tool which i think is often underdeveloped because managers are often very operative and um, consumed with day-to-day -day tasks mm. so yeah th these are my ideas thank you <laughs> thank you so much um i would love to bring in one more person um and she's she's just looking at me uh brit can i bring you <laughs> can you bring can i bring you in because you have also so much leadership experience and oh. i think everybody would benefit hearing from you Oh, yes, of course. Um, thanks to you all for your great input. Um, we've been working, uh, as everybody, uh, a lot online for the last two years. And the interesting thing is that in February 20, like two years ago, with the starting of the pandemic, we started a new project, a new Germany-wide project. It's uh, referring to the Real Supermarkets, 276 locations all over Germany and a completely new team from EY and client, general planner, etc. And there are a lot of people who I have not met yet in these two years. We are about to finish the project and I, we never met in person. And I must say, I don't like it. So we, we did create a large uh, widespread uh, location where we can meet in smaller groups. And some people I see different uh, from time to time, and it makes a huge difference for me to see them. But it's very different in my small company, Silver Engineer. We are about 20 employees, and we know each other since a long time. And in the first lockdown, we started a daily good morning call <laughs> at 8.45. So on one hand, of course, we as the owners, we knew everybody was... <laughs> at least partly dressed and <laughs> at the desk. And on the other hand, we could talk with each other. We could communicate. And it was not only about business. Of course, we would talk about the projects, but as well, um, maybe not seeing red eyes, but one colleague got divorced and he told us about it <laughs> and she moved out. And then he was all, what I mean is if you know people, then it works very well for me. Like now seeing, some people here on the call who I can't know personally, then it's completely fine. And then, of course, I appreciate not to commute. But if you've never met people and never seen them, it's quite difficult. What I wanted to say is these daily calls, when things got more normal, we changed it to weekly calls, like company wide. But of course, with my uh, team, I have daily contact, sure not one-on-one -on -one with everybody, but daily. And I think that's the least we can do. But I'm looking back uh, forward to go back to more personal meetings, for sure. And um, since we are coming close to the end, um, there is um, one person who also just wrote into the chat, and that is uh, Vladimir Grad. Do you also want to come in briefly? Um, yes, with with pleasure. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I can totally relate to to the topics we discussed, starting from the beginning, getting out of the comfort zone, moving from office to home office, uh, and all the challenges uh, having with a big team in virtual mode. Some of them with camera, some of them without camera, some of them giving feedback, coming up with ideas, and some of them really like shutting completely and not showing themselves thinking how to motivate them, how to put energy in this. So uh, Claire, I think you mentioned exhausting. Yes, I felt myself really exhausted several times. And now we came to the other challenge, how to motivate people to see each other personally from time to time. 
So it's like uh, going from one challenge to another. But to tell you the truth, it's a relief to see that uh, I'm not alone and independent from company or from industry, we are facing uh, the same uh, the same challenges. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to come back now to our now three panelists um, for a concluding round. Um, and you are certainly um, welcome to pick up on anything you just heard from our participants. But I also want to ask you one last uh, closing question. Usually, a lot of times we end with, so what are the um, two or three big recommendations you would give a leader to get through these times and to improve? Um, I would turn it around and ask, what would you tell um, those who are being led, um, the employees, the team members, how to deal with an exhausted leader um, or a leader going through change and leader go through trouble. Um, so maybe you can get that, bring that also into, um, into your answer. And uh, maybe we can start um, with Claire, um, then Uwe and then Natalie. Um, I can give a, everybody here a practical tip. Um, I would always ask the leader what is our purpose? And if we all know the purpose, then I, we don't have to exhaust you, my dear leader, because then we can then we can contrib contribute to the purpose of what we're doing. And the purpose is not goals and not KPIs and not and not numbers. Purpose is always more than that. So le if leaders sit down and uh, discuss what the purpose of the of of, of the, the company, the team, the the, the division is then they'll have an easier life if everybody understands what the purpose is. So I would give the employees the advice to ask their leaders, what is the purpose? Thank you so much. Um, Uwe, over to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, which advises to the employees? I would say trust your managers, have trust in them, in their skills, support them if necessary and possible, and also be a little bit more flexible, let's say, and more tolerant than it used to be maybe in the office. And that sounds like it goes the other way around as well, huh? Mm. <laughs> um, and um, last but not least, Natalie. Yes, I would recommend uh, to use professional templates so that uh, when you are in virtual meetings that you really as employee are prepared for the meetings and have uh, templates uh, that are prepared and then can directly be used in the meetings and to join um, uh, joint results that are really visualized. That clearly helps in this uh, dynamic world to have the process and the results visible jointly. And that is um, a good help and support for leaders um, after my um, experiences. That would be a more technical tool-based recommendation and uh, a more relationship-oriented uh, recommendation would be also as employee beam be a warm hearted um, also in the relation to your leaders um, that is also needed. And that also goes the other way around, I would say. Um, yes, thank definitely. You so, <laughs> definitely. Thank you so much. Um, and Claire, thank you so much for also pointing out the purpose. Um, the purpose of the Aspen Institute of Germany is bring all of you together. And I always say, make the impossible exchange possible and um, bring in new ideas. Um, and this has worked really, really well today. In our last leadership meeting, we talked about music um, and, uh, and leadership in crisis. And we had a, a conductor taking part in that uh, discussion. And the conductor said um, she did an exercise during conducting um, uh, play, uh, music. Um, she just left the orchestra and let the orchestra continue playing. And in the beginning, everybody was really nervous. There was a little bit of chaos and then people got used to it. The musician got used to it and um, became a lot more alert to each other. Um, I had the feeling that I could have left any time 
this meeting um, and you would have continued as a great team and exchanged and discussed oh yes <laughs> and um, i want to thank our four panelists for this marvelous um, discussion i had the feeling you knew each other you trusted each other um, you brought in new ideas um, it was a really good feeling for me thank you so much for doing this with us today we will continue with our leadership series um, stay with us um, we have lots of plans um, lots of ideas and hopefully later on this year we will also get back into our philosophy and practice before mm -hmm. i let you all go we need to also give a big applause to the team because i think they did marvelously today i'm really really proud yes. that everything worked thank you so much and with this i wish you